So this is an, M um, an MPI Mini, which is a late model coil pack here, uh, differentiated. So the kit is effectively the same, whichever model of car uh, it is. So this part always stays the same. So this, with this, you get a, a inlet manifold, you get the throttle body or two injectors, the wiring we supply, the regulator, tell people how to plumb that in. Um, the sensors it looks at, so it's got a thr throttle position sensor here. There's no map sensor. This car's an MPI, so this on this car we supply an entire engine harness, which picks up from the multifunction relay pack, RACU here, the chassis connector here and here, which has the lambda sensor in it. We'll get on in a minute. Crank sensor down in the flywheel housing. And then we look at the air temperature. So the air temperature is uh, this one over here in the air filter, little sensor there. And we look at the water temperature from the engine. And that's the only sensors we look at. So in this car, it's got a narrow band Rover fitted um, lambda sensor for the idle because this, this is a 1999 MPI. So it's got quite strict emissions regulations and it has to have a catalyst for the test. So this engine, it's a tuned engine, uh, it's 1380cc. It's got a pretty hot camshaft in it. It's got rockers on it, a uh, modified cylinder head. So it's quite a tough one to map for the MOT emissions in, in the UK with a narrow band lambda sensor and a catalyst. So, the, you know, this is typical of, of, of a kit we send out. The carburetor kit's a bit different. They've got a trigger wheel on the front, which uh, sits on the front of the crank pulley, which this one's got it in its flywheel because it's a late car. So there's a little bit of skill required in setting the trigger kit up, but all the instructions are on our website. We show you how to do that. It's not a problem. So this engine's stone cold. I'm going to show you it's stone cold. I'm going to get a hold of the exhaust manifold. It's stone cold. It's been sitting for three or four days now. This is a car from uh, Guernsey, which is overseas for us. It's coming to be picked up any time. But yeah, stone cold. It's, it hasn't been run for three or four days. And we'll just show you how this uh, how this works. Okay, holding the exhaust manifold. Stone cold. idling on its own, stone cold. The idle will always be low when it's cold because we've got a, a thousand RPM target idle speed for this engine. Because we don't have an idle air bypass system, we're using algorithms in the ECU to add spark into the system and um, to try and jack the engine speed up when it's cold like this. And we're looking at the coolant temperature. So once the coolant temperature, you can hear it now, once the coolant temperature starts to come up a little bit, the, it, that'll stop putting additional fuel into the base map to make the engine run how it wants. And again, when the idle speed comes up, we'll start taking out the proportional gain spark advance and the engine will idle normally. So we have these, we have a proportional spark advance system for idle control and it does that when it's cold or hot. And we've got a decaying um, fuel, additional fuel multiplier based on uh, water coolant temperature. All of those things are tunable within the software and we do give you guidance on how to do it. But these areas are where a lot of tuners could fall down and can't get these things to run. You've just seen me, this is Stone Cold, that's a 286 cam, a Lambda sensor, narrow band, catalyst car, ticket over from Stone Cold. for a start again. And now you can hear the ECU's got a hold of the ignition advance. That's without any throttle pedal. It's got a hold of the ignition advance with bringing the engine up to speed. So once it gets the temperature, the engine will sit about 1000 RPM. In lesser cammed cars, you can have them idling at 850, 900 RPM. So that's a difficult car to do because it's tuned heavily tuned and it's got a catalyst. <laughs> 